My name is Dr. Wilson, and I'm the MD at Pinehurst State Hospital. I've spent two decades trying to heal each and every patient in my care. In that time, I've seen the most extraordinary subjects, some with broken minds, others with broken souls. But all are exceptional. These are the Pinehurst Sessions. This is the personal audio log of Dr. Wilson. It's about 3 p.m. This Jeffrey Mason is truly something of an enigma. Seemingly insane in every way, yet with no diagnosable traits. It seems lazy to slap various labels on him to excuse his actions. There is more to him, but I think that in time, I'll get to the bottom of it. Come in. Hello, Adrian. It's good to see you. I came as soon as I could. You said you have some information for me? Yes. These are the complete files, including taped sessions, where Jeffrey Mason confesses to multiple murders. Hopefully this helps to fill in some of the missing pieces for your investigation. Thank you, Clarence. I'm surprised you got him to talk at all. Well, he seemed to be bragging about it. I'm just glad he's off the streets. I'd feel better if he were behind bars. Should it reach that point, I'll gladly sign the release forms. I need more time with him, though. I believe his brother is still out there. I understand. I admire your patience with animals like him. I'm just doing my job. By the way, how is the survivor doing? You mean Jane? Yes, how is she? I guess she's going to be staying with a friend of hers. Poor kid. The look on her face when we stopped Mason. No one should have to feel that kind of fear. I'd like to speak with her and see if I can help her through this trauma. I don't know if she's willing to talk to anyone right now. I understand, but when she's ready... Perhaps you could give her my card. Of course. Thank you. Norris says hi, by the way. I'll give him your best. I'm Dr. Clarence T. Wilson. It's currently 3.33 p.m. on January. In our last session, Jeffrey Mason confessed to every atrocity he's been accused of. I have provided all the information, audio sessions, etc. to Detective Kent. In this session, I would like to press him a bit more about his brother, Lou. It seems as though Lou may still be alive. Sean, send him in. Let's not waste time on formalities. From the information you provided, as well as the lack of a body, I am left to assume that your brother is still alive. If that is the case, do you have any idea where he could be? How would I? Well, he is your brother. You would know him better than most. We never got along, Doctor. And he certainly never told me all of his secrets. But if he's alive, I'm sure he doesn't want to be found. Well, all the same, I'd like to know more about your brother. Perhaps there is some detail that could provide clues to his whereabouts. So you can help him? <laughs> like you're helping me? Yes. I believe he may have dissociative identity disorder. <laughs> mm. So you met Sully? Yes. Tell me about Sully. What is there to tell? I was under the impression that Sully was just his stuffed animal, until I met him. Oh, the stuffed bunny was just a consolation prize. What do you mean? When we were kids, Mom brought home a pet rabbit for Lou, and he named it Sully. I see. How old was your brother? He was five. He loved Sully so much, it was nauseating. 
And when Sully died, Lou had a full mental breakdown. About a week later, Mom dragged us to a garage sale, and Lou spotted the stuffed animal. I thought there was something strange about it. Dad was even creeped out by it. He said, Christ, Lou, it looks like it wants to harvest your soul. <laughs> but Lou was convinced that it was a sign. So he begged Mom to get it for him. And he named it after his pet. How did the bunny die? Apparently someone slipped rat poison into Sully's food. Let me guess, this someone was you. <laughs> That's just cruel. Why would you do that? I wanted to see what would happen. I stood in the doorway watching Sully writhe around in pain, spewing vomit from his mouth. I think that was the first time I watched something die. And it gave you some sense of excitement. Uh-huh. I'm surprised you didn't use a knife. There's more than one way to skin a cat, doctor. <laughs> or a bunny in this case. When did Lou realize that Sully was dead? Later that day. There were a bunch of birds swarming behind the house. And when he chased them away, he saw Sully. There were maggots all over him. The birds had been tearing at his rotting flesh. <laughs> the sight of it permanently traumatized my brother. And your family never knew that you did it? Maybe they did. But they would never admit it to themselves. Not back then. No, 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 no. Back then, they wanted to pretend we were a happy little family. After that, Lou developed his other half. He started lashing out and speaking differently. And Sully became something else entirely. So his anger and pain transformed into an alternate identity. Uh, but wait! There's more. <laughs> Lou's mind was so shattered that each of the shards became someone new. So Sully's not the only one. There were five by my last count. I'm not sure where they all came from, but Lou is just as fucked up as I am. <sighs> and it's beautiful. I refuse to believe that he is anything like you. I don't give a fuck what you believe. You sit here asking all these stupid questions, trying to pry at my brain for the answers. And when you get them, they just churn your stomach, don't they? They make you sick. I make you sick. I can see it in your eyes. I repulse you. But you really think you can help us? Don't you? I will continue to do my job no matter what. <laughs> A regular fucking boy scout. I'm going to be very straightforward here. I am here to treat patients, to heal damaged minds. But you go beyond that. I will continue to do what I can for you. But they want to put you in prison. But I know you would probably thrive there in your current state. So I'm going to recommend that you remain here in Pinehurst, where you will be isolated and unable to act on your impulses. Oh, I think you just like having me around. <laughs> but this place isn't as squeaky clean as you pretend it is. Please, enlighten me on why you think that. Oh, Pinehurst has one hell of a history. What do you know about the history from around here? You're not even from Forest Lawn. Maybe I know something you don't. That's right, you know everything. Be 
because you've seen it. Don't fucking mock me. Well, what do you see for me, Jeffrey? I see you lying in a pool of blood. <sighs> Wishful thinking on your part, I'm sure. I'm going to continue treating you, but these sessions will become less frequent from now on. I hope you understand. There are others with more immediate need of my care. People who actually want to get better. Oh, I understand, Doctor. 